What's up guys, a couple of days ago on the channel in this video right up here, I spec'd out, built and tested a $700 1080p gaming box. There seemed to be unfortunately a lot of negative sentiment in the comments in that video about how I built it and my parts choices. So what we're gonna do in this video is try to rectify that. So what I want to do in this very informal setting is go back onto PC Part Picker, put together the same system that we just built in that video, and then start to modify it. Make some changes here or there, maybe try a Ryzen 3 system, maybe try bumping up to an Intel i5 if we could fit it in the budget. And then I'll try to figure out what I think is going to be the best performer out of those configurations. I'm going to put it together and I'm going to test it for you guys on my test bench right over there live while you guys are watching. So let's get right into it right now. All right, so here is our system as we configured it. The G5400, the MA410P, the Gigabyte motherboard. Uh, this Patriot memory shows blue, but their blue, black, and red heat spreader versions of the same memory are all the same price. Uh, the Crucial MX500 SSD, the 1050Ti SSC, our H500 case, and the Coolmaster power supply. There are a couple of things here that I wanted to see if we could keep. Uh, the Cooler Master power supply is one of them. $45 is not the cheapest you could get a power supply for, but this has a couple things going for it. It's 80 plus bronze rated, which a lot of budget power supplies are not. Uh, it's semi-modular, which a lot of budget power supplies are not. And it's also 550 watts, so that means it could likely survive uh, an upgrade cycle. So you could have this for a number of years and still use it and it would still be fine. So I think I wanna keep this. The case is something else I do wanna keep. Yes, you could get cases for 40 or $50, but once you, you dip down into that super budget tier, $40 cases, you run into some quality issues. And I really do like the quality and aesthetics of the H500. The build experience was really good and I think I wanna stick with it, but Feel free to change this if you feel like you'd like to. And again, the 1050 Ti I think is a really good starting spot for a budget 1080p gaming system. If you wanted to change this, maybe we'll try to change this if we have the room in the budget, but this is what I'd like to start out with again for this build. Everything else is kind of up in the air. So let's see what we could do. Why don't we try going up to something like an, an 8400 and we'll see if we can fit that in the budget. Obviously, we're gonna have to get rid of our cooler. We'll just use the stock box cooler, even as terrible as it is. The motherboard, uh, we're gonna have to go with, I think ASRock makes some decent, um, like B360 boards. I know I have, I have this board. Yeah, I have this board over there. Um, so let's go with this one. I guess you could go micro ATX if you really wanted to, but. Uh, I go B360 Pro 4. Our memory is going to have to stay at 8 gigs. There's no way we're going to be able to fit more in there. We're already over budget. Uh, our storage is going to have that's going to have to go. We're going to need to we're going to need to stick around this budget actually. So whether you go with like a WD Blue one terabyte drive or something like a 240 gig SSD. Um, I think the price is going to be approximately the same, but you know, obviously you're going to have a lot more storage here. It's just going to be, you know, frustratingly slow at times to load programs and especially to, to boot into windows. So where does that leave us? $720. So we're a little bit higher than where we were before. Um, not overly so. And may, even if we change the, Let's change our GPU to, instead of the SSC version, uh, let's just go with like, oops. What's wrong with me? TI um, with the SC version. So, you know, we're gonna shave some dollars off there and they're basically, gonna, they're gonna perform very similarly. And there we go, 699.33, right on target. Um, what I'd actually like to do is I wanna see if we, I wanna see if we end up going with like a, a Ryzen 3 based system, if we can potentially squeeze in a GTX 1060. How about that? So let's leave everything the same and we're going to 
change this to a 2200G. And we gotta shut that off. There we go, 2200G. We're gonna use the stock uh, Wraith cooler for the motherboard. So MSI makes some pretty cheap boards, uh, B350 boards, B350M. Um, I know I have, I have this board. Wow, that's super cheap. All right, let's go with that. That's really cheap. That's gonna allow us to, that's gonna give us some flexibility here. So let's squeeze in a 1060. Uh, 1060, 1066 gig. How about that? Where does that leave us? 660, it leaves us, so, leaves us some room. Wow, okay. Um, so, I, it doesn't leave us enough room to double up on our memory, but it leaves us enough room to do something better with our storage. So even if that's just like adding in uh, 240 gig um, SSD of some kind, you know, something like something like this. This is just as an example, I guess, but we end up, well, that's 717. So there are cheaper ones out there. I think there's like, um, you could go with uh, some no-name brand for like 40 bucks probably, and you'll be right at right at Target. So, but I think, but the most important parts here is what, and what we're going to test, and I think this is what I want to test, is a GTX 1060 with a Ryzen 3 2200 and eight gigs of RAM. Those are the important parts, and that's what we're gonna test. And we'll see if we get some better results. I assume we will, 1060 versus 1050 Ti, but um, never know. So that's why we do the testing. So let's put this together on the test bench and uh, and try it out. All right, guys, so let's take a walk over to the test bench and check out what's going on over here. We see our EVGA GTX 1060. This is actually the super, super clocked version. Uh, in order to compensate for this versus the super clocked version that I have in the configuration, I'm just not going to overclock this. And I think that's gonna make up for the performance difference between the super, super clocked and the super clocked version of this card, which is honestly fairly minimal anyway. Um, so right under there, right under the Wraith cooler, as you can see right over here, if my my ISO will adjust, how about I how about I do it manually? Uh, I have a, a Ryzen 3 1200. Now I know I configured a 2200G, but the 1200 is going to perform very similarly. And I don't, I figured out I don't have a 2200. I thought I did and I don't. So we're gonna run this with the 1200. And I think performance is going to be fairly comparable. Uh, and then have MSI Afterburner up right here as well. Just showing you guys that uh, no settings have been monkeyed with. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the camera down right over here and I'm gonna point it at the screen. And then we're gonna do some live overclocking uh, and you'll see the results. So here's the Metro result. 93.59 average frame rate. Uh, for reference, the um, System, the Pentium system with a GTX 1050 Ti was at about 60 frames per second in that same test. Far Cry 5 results are in. 74 frames per second, quite the improvement over the previous system, which was about 49 frames per second. So yeah, big time improvement there. And I'm gonna run the rest of the benchmarks behind the scenes so I don't have to keep filming them, don't have to put you through all this, uh, and I'll throw a chart up right now. So clearly I think we all learned a little something here today. 
Uh, the $700 price tier is actually a really good spot right now if you want to get into 1080p gaming. You could definitely do it in a number of different ways. The way I did it in the initial video is probably a little more aesthetically pleasing. It also gives you the cooler expansion room if you wanted to pop in a different ship at a later time. However, uh, I will admit that it seems likely the configuration that I just tested is probably the better overall option. The aim for platform isn't going anywhere anytime soon, and a GTX 1060 is just a much more powerful card overall. So I want to thank everybody for your input on that video, and without that, I wouldn't have done, I wouldn't have made this one, and I wouldn't have explored the differences in performance that you guys can get for about the same price. So get subscribed to the channel if you are not already, and thanks for watching. See you next time.